So can I ask you a playful question? So Barton Gelman yesterday published a piece in the Post about how the NSA is um, mining um, Gmail contacts and Facebook friend lists and so forth. Yep. Yep. So what if the Swedish equivalent of the NSA were to approach you and say, we found out one of these poets is central to the Pirate Party. We're very interested in the Pirate Party's activities. This is a much more efficient way for us to mine the networks. Uh, can we see your data? Can we work with your uh, yeah. networks in order to... Um, surveil, etc. In other words, <laughs> is there a nefarious way of thinking about these relational networks, not simply an affirmative, aesthetic way of thinking about them? Of course there is. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, well, in, in one way, it's kind of different to, because this, this website is kind of open for, for, you can go in and read the comments and, and the poetry, mm -hmm. not be, not the, you don't have to become a user to do that. Right. So in, in that case, it's kind of open for everyone. So you could have seen the discussion thread the Pirate Party was having. Mm -hmm. uh, although the discussions at the forum are locked. Mm -hmm. So maybe if they, if they sort of approach me for that, I have, would have to. But I have sort of signed an agreement, or I, I cannot sort of give it away. So I would definitely answer no to that question. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe a more playful <laughs> expansion of, um, not so much a question, so much as a comment, you know, following along the line of thought that uh, we just started here. The interesting question theoretically is whether surveillance is or can be constitutive of the sense of poetry, of oneself as a poet. Oh whether the function of a uh, site like this is to allow a kind of a surveillance uh, synonym for, for that would be a sense of social relationships that are, is constitutive of one's feeling of oneself as, as a poet. You, know, you need an active the gaze in, in there somewhere. When yeah. reanimating over a voice, I guess. Well, like that's the structure of performance, right? We don't need the news to call audiences surveyors. That's right. Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's a good question, and I often get I also often get these kind of ethical questions when when I, I'm using the database material, and and I think I mean it's 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 a good thing that those kind of questions sort of come. Uh, I would be more more uh, surprised if I didn't get them because. I'm doing something with a material that is sort of open, but also sort of closed it in a sort of ambiguous status. Um, so it's not published poetry, but it's still not not published poetry. So it's a distinction and a discussion I need to have in my in my dissertation mm -hmm. as well, because it's it's really important in how how to sort of make research on these kind of materials mm -hmm. and also to have a critical point of like a meta reflective way of of doing research I mean wh what am I doing as a researcher in this area I mean another way to put the question is less you know would you surrender your data because um, <laughs> I don't doubt that they could get it if they wanted it mm -hmm. it's more the question that one would pose for anyone doing social network yeah. analysis which is what are your thoughts about the fact that your work is in some respect or could be construed as is operating in the same spirit or vein as um, the Swedish, you know, the, in other words, it's a kind of mimicry in a way, the kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. social networking yeah, yeah, yeah. thing that's happening right now. Yeah. You know, back in the, in the court of Louis XIV, the censors became kind of best friends with the poets. They were always reading the work, doing criticism, having the power to prevent publication. Mm -hmm. So that.